one thing I truly learned from this episode is that one truly can't just move on from their past just because it's the right thing to do. A lot of people, without trying to look into other people's perspective on life, will immediately judge them saying, oh, you should be doing this, or you could be doing that, or you need to do this, but it's not that easy. It really isn't. Even when I was watching Fruits Baskets the reboot, saying how people can't understand how hard it is for some people to change, move forward, to be better. It's not as easy as like, how the person who doesn't know how to do it should do it. You know, you judging them and saying, yeah, it sounds like a good idea, but how? Everyone is chained down by their own personal reasons, you know? They're chained down by trauma, you know, their past, PTSD, of habits. It is not easy to break out of it, especially by yourself most of the times. You know, depending on your environment will sometimes shape you as the person you are. You know, Kor- Koro Yuki, or I mean as in Koro Gao, is a very interesting character, seen as a joke character. He displayed how professional he truly was in these past two episodes. In the beginning, you'll think he's just this corrupted, very sneaky, you know, cunning politician man who's just a scammer, good con artist, very smart, knows how to do anything under the table. But... It was more to him thanks to this second episode. It's amazing how you peel a character down in just one or two episodes. Shows good writing of characterizations, in a way. I'm not saying the true and deaf character, for what we got on the surface was pretty darn good, in my opinion. You know, we, you, have, you had one opinion of him, then this episode gave you another opinion on him. Kind of like they do in Mushu Rotensai a lot, you know. You first see a character, you think differently of them. But then, as time goes on, you see something else about them. They're like, whoa, I had no idea. Okay, I'm starting to understand this character more. You don't have to like him, but you'll at least understand them. And that's what they did in this episode, man. Koro Gao was that kind of guy, man. He did his job. He wasn't freaking saying he's in it for justice or he's talking about right or wrong. He's just saying he can't move forward. And this is the only thing he feels can at least give him some closure from taking out a guy who took something away from him. He was a professional, so he never put his feelings inside his work, which he did. But however, someone wanted to get rid of him and clean up the tracks. And it took his daughter away from him. Instead, he survived. So they assumed he was dead. He went into hiding and took on the skies. He even took his daughter's name and his name and fused it together. Koro Yuki, come on. I guess you want to understand if you knew nothing about the past beforehand. But yes, he disguised as, you know, as a different dude. And the prime minister he was after didn't even recognize it or even care because that's how little he cared about the people he took out. This man is corrupted as heck. And as being a professional, you don't do the right thing. You do your job. You see, Tayo is not a hero. He is a spy. And as a spy, you don't do the right thing. You do your job. Which I'm repeating myself here, but getting my point across. As in, um, you know, the, the, the sniper from Team Fortress 2, feelings. Murderers have feelings. I am a professional. <laughs> we don't do that stuff here. And, and it's true. You know, this dude went through what Tyle went through. And it was even, it was sympathized to Tyle. And Tyle was able to do the same. And it was like, hey, um, I know what you're going through. Step aside, I'll even tell you anything you need to know about your family. But Tyle, despite tempting that was, he had to turn it down. He had to save 
a broken man. You know, you gotta save a corrupted man from broken man. And it, and it really sucks. How many times have I seen a scenario before where you see a scenario where as a corrupted politician or a very evil businessman is being rescued because they have to stop them from being killed by someone that they did wrong a long time ago. And God knows how many more people lives this guy has ruined. You know, think of all kinds of bad guys through other forms of media, video games, comic books, anime, manga, movies, TV shows. There's always that person you gotta save, the character has to save. And they're rotten to their core. And the person that you have to stop is someone you can sympathize with. Someone who's been done wrong, and he's just one of many in the bucket that has been shot down by this corrupted person that you have to rescue, by the way. And it's like, of course, if it's a video game, people are like, I don't want to save him, if especially it's optional. Most people don't choose to save him. But again, it's not the professional way. As in your job, as you see in media, as in TV shows, comic books, and other stuff, you have to save that man. Because that's what you have to do. People say violence isn't always the answer. Killing isn't always the answer. Is that true? Who say it isn't? People say who is you to claim who can, whose life can be taken? Well, who are you to say I'm not allowed to take his life? Especially if they took someone from me. Why is your values over gets over triumph minds? Yeah. Ever thought about that? But I'm not trying to get too deep into it, but I feel like it. Because that's just how I see the entire situation, you know? It's it's very, very gray, you know. The world is not always black and white. Maybe the guy who is in power in this episode, the Prime Minister, may be corrupted, but maybe he's a necessary evil. Maybe for what he's doing is actually for a betterment of their area, but He's just corrupted way of doing things. That could be it. I'm not trying to offend him, but there must be reasons. So, Tayo stopped the guy by learning things from his family. And it's funny how the more important things he learns is from the guy that's supposed to hate him the most. Which is ironic. Kirichiro, the big brother, telling him, If you meet a professional, they'll know all about you. If they know all about you, and they'll try to use your techniques. You gotta use the weakness of those techniques as well to take them down. And which what Tayo did. And he was able to overcome a man. The reason why Tayo was able to move on and to fight through the darkness is because he had someone by his side. Musuki. And since Musuki was there and he decided to marry her, he also got a new form of family. And he'll do anything to protect them. Fight alongside them. Kurogo didn't have that. Kurogo only had one person, and that was um, Yuri. And she's dead. And because of that, he was all alone. All alone in the darkness. And since he was all alone in the darkness, he had no choice to go in the darkness and step towards the light. Go to seek vengeance, no matter what the cost. The entire political thing was just a thing a set up a scam, just distract everybody. He did not care about that. All he wanted was his revenge. Because he had nothing else to live for. But Tayo does. He has a family now, a new family. So as is my point I was saying in the beginning of this video, not everyone can move forward and change, unfortunately. They can't. Depending on their circumstances, depending on their environment, it can hold them down or set them free. Do they have anyone around them to care for them, to support them? Are they all alone? Is the people around them even healthy for their mental health? Or maybe it's best that they are alone, to have some clear thought. So many variables into a situation that you can't always predict, unfortunately. And that's just how it is in life, you know? So you can't offer out your hand to help. But it doesn't mean they'll take it. It's entirely up to them. So Tayo comes back home being more grateful for what he has, despite knowing one piece 
a step closer to what happened to his family and what he will do for the rest of his life. So yeah, for a show that's all about being goofy and silly and stuff, it will have its serious moments. And that's what I like about um, these kind of comedy shows, where it can be funny, but every now and then it'll have a serious moment where it makes you think, you know, like, okay, I'm stop laughing. I'm actually thinking about this moment. And it makes you wonder about things, you know, and it's, I like those things, things like Gintama, assassinating classroom, and stuff, you know, it has its funny moments, but deep down inside, some terrible things happen, I enjoy those kind of things, and that's where I think I'll end the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, if you did, like, comment, subscribe, of course, hit that bell icon, this has been Macron on Madame, signing up.